So the point of this video is not going to be because I want to talk about stuff that I've done or anything like that, but I am going to do that just to, to help explain and make the point that I want to make. And the, the main question I'm going to be answering is best business model online. If you're not even if you're trying to get started, but if you're especially if you're trying to get started, if you want to make some money online, you want to make money yourself, work for yourself. And if you want it to be more along the lines of passive income. Now, I don't think there's anything really that you don't you just don't do anything and you get a lot of money. But for limited work and very front loaded, what I mean by that is you do a good a fair amount of work, a chunk of work up front. But once you've done that and uh, get the ball rolling, it kind of just keeps rolling on its own with very minimal work on your part. I'm talking an hour a week, honestly. And that hour a week could be making you hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars. That's not hyperbole. That's not me trying to like throw some crazy number out there and then will you uh, reel you into buying a course from me. There's no course. I'm not selling you anything. If you're familiar with me and my videos, my channel at all, you already know that. But so quickly, I'll, I'll recap my story just to kind of show that I've that uh, I'm not again. A lot of people will say, yeah, this is the best one and go buy my course to learn how to do it. And that's why it's the best one is because they want to sell you on the course that teaches about this. But I have done several different things and have had success in several different things. And uh, let's see, I first started, I you know, dropped I first started making real money on my own in 2016 and we're now in 2021 so that's about five let's see 16 17 18 19 20 20 yeah so i guess five maybe a little bit over five years that i've been <clears throat> just making money on my own and it's really really nice and not just making money on my own but making money in a way that has given me honestly so much flexibility and and so much time to be able to pursue other things and when I say that, if you're familiar with me, that's not necessarily about money. A lot of people figure out how to do something like this and all they do is just like, how can I make more and more money with this? I like what I'm about to explain, this the business model, because it frees you up to, if that is what you want to do, to just make more money, great. Like whatever you want to do, that's up to you. Um, but for me personally, it's been amazing because it's freed me up to do, the first thing I did is I went snowboarding for a year. Like a year, actually it was, it was closer to two years. Um, super fun and something I'd always wanted to do my whole life and honestly I don't think I'd ever I don't know I'd, I'd ever really knew if I'd be able to like really just snowboard full-time basically like as much as I wanted literally if I wanted to every day I went every day and uh, the reason I was able to do that is because I set up this business that did it like it just ran like it did its thing and deposits would come in and I didn't have to continue to dump a whole bunch of time into that um so snowboarding uh at this point what i've basically done the last year a little bit over a year um like i spent all of 2020 and up until now or mid 21 um i've been traveling across the country basically creating a history channel of sorts uh and different um historical sites uh with with the back with some background on them and stuff like that and I'll be starting to release that here shortly, but that's that's a that's a ton. Like, and I'm literally talking about 25, 30 different states that I've been to in just the past year, year and a half. Um, but that's tough. I mean, financially, that's tough. Time-wise, that's extremely tough. And the reason, the way I've been able to do that is because of. Uh, it's, it at least started with this business model that I'm going to show you, and uh, I'll kind of tell you what it. You know, I'll explain a little bit more along the way, but yeah, it all it all hinges on the business model that I want to explain to you. So, just to recap, um, if you haven't watched this video, I don't know if I've really said this before, but money made me depressed. I recommend that you go watch it. I go. I'll, I'll skip over some stuff that is in that video if you want more details. But basically, I was in school. I had like. Pretty much, well, at the point I started this, I had like a couple semesters left, uh, but by the time I, I ended up dropping out of school because I started figuring out some how to make money online and like they weren't teaching it in school. And in fact, when I went to my professor to be like, hey, can I share this stuff with the class? I got turned down because like, well, apparently they don't want you to learn to make money on your own. They won't, don't want you to learn how this stuff actually works. They just want you to get a degree and then go work for a corporation that 
they have some sort of internship deal with or whatever with the university blah 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 so anyways I first if you're familiar with Kickstarter dot com it's a platform where you can launch products and people basically donate money to you and you are able to gather a bunch of money up front from a bunch of different people and then use that to go f buy your first batch of inventory so that's kind of where I started I mean prior to that I'd launched a like little clothing brand on on Instagram and you know made some sales but nothing I, I n never where I was like oh this is like I should really really continue to work on this although I, I think I could have with that Instagram stuff but um, anyways I, I you know and prior to that as a teenager like I sold on eBay so had like a little bit of experience posting a product and making a few sales but nothing where I ever entertained the idea of dropping out of school I was I was honestly a person that was very against that I was like no you need to get a degree and all that um, but then it just I, I you know experiences teach you differently and taught my experiences taught me differently my experiences taught me that nope you can actually you know <laughs> the, all the way down to school actually doesn't want to teach you these things but these things are legit and you can do very well and have an, a very amazing life better life than if you are just to rely and think degree is how you get through life and go work uh, for someone else nine to five every day like you know what I'm saying so I first started launching products on Kickstarter that went well I had a client reach out to me to help him launch a product on Kickstarter and he explained to me that he was selling products on Amazon and I and we just like swapped uh, well basically he, he asked me Kickstarter wise like what I was doing what I was up to and he's like dude you 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 why aren't you selling on Amazon like you're you have you you'd be able to do it quite easily like with what you already know how to do and it seems like it's actually less work and more rewarding potentially like more more passive month to month and and continual income uh than Kickstarter cuz cuz Kickstarter is like a project you launch it for 30 days get the funds 2 weeks after that but then it's like well got to do a new project if if that's the approach to Kickstarter um so he, he explained that to me i was like bro tell me more like i'm i'm interested um and he he sent me one video of <laughs> this was eye opening uh of a a lawyer who was making really good money i believe he was a yeah i believe he was a lawyer yeah he was a lawyer and uh anyways the lawyer just in this little video was explaining how he went from uh you know lots of hours billable hours making good money but just constant work like non-stop work to the point where yeah you got money but you can't even really enjoy the money because you just got to constantly be working and what he did is he started selling on amazon and he's like quickly i was making way more than i was as a lawyer and had all the time in the world now like i was almost completely free time wise and uh which you know that was cool to hear but a lot of people will sell you on that sort of stuff so i wasn't like completely sold on that but then when they when when the the client that introduced me to it um he broke down how you can go onto specific Amazon listings and look at what's called the BSR the best sellers rank and you can basically and then you can take that number and look it up in like a program or a graph or whatever and 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 just kind of figure out like roughly what the best sellers are in certain categories like what products are selling really well in certain categories so like the BSR if the BSR is one in that category they're the top seller which means they're making a stupid amount of sales and a stupid amount of money uh, and, you know but if their BSR is like 452,000 then obviously you know that's a lot they're a lot further down and not selling as well so you can kind of just go and click into listings and different products on Amazon look at the BSR and then compare that BSR to other products in the category and then look at other sellers of that same product that you're looking at, see what their BSR is, and just kind of get an idea if, you know, this product or this niche of product is uh, has a low BSR, meaning that it's making a lot of sales. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's that's amazing. And then and then another part of it was once you you know find your product and want to sell it, this is where this is where it really got amazing to me, is you could actually just your inventory send it to Amazon's warehouses. And then what happens is when uh, a customer purchases from your Amazon listing, Amazon picks, packs, and ships that product to the customer. So that meant that I don't have to deal with any inventory. I mean, I have to. You have to have inventory, but you don't have to deal with housing it. You don't have to deal with um, picking it, packing it, shipping it. Like once you get it to Amazon's warehouses, they just do that. And then he explained also that you can just 
send your inventory straight from your supplier to Amazon's warehouses. So you don't even have to bring it to yourself or your own warehouse and then get it to Amazon. It's like, it can be completely hands off. And as he explained it, I was like, wait, so you're telling me you basically can just do product research. And then from there, it's com you can make it completely hands off where you don't have to store, you don't have to house, you don't have to touch, you don't have to do customer service because if you put your product in Amazon's warehouse, which is called Amazon FBA, fulfilled by Amazon, then they also handle customer service for you because that's how you qualify for Prime. And if you're a Prime member, Amazon handles that customer service. I was like, wow, that's, it's like all, all the, you know, the product research that I've been doing for Kickstarter, but then it's over. <laughs> like Kickstarter is like do the product research, get the prototype, film the video, put it up there. And then you gotta, uh, you know, if the, the customer service element is definitely there and then you gotta bring the inventory yourself, you gotta pick, pack and ship it. And that's what I did for my first few Kickstarters was, you know, like that. Um, and then then this Amazon FBA warehouse, like don't touch, you don't have to touch it. You don't ha necessarily have to see it. You know, it, wise too, if for quality inspection and make sure your stuff's good. But like, if you're, comfortable with all that you can literally just send and all you have to do is just keep sending inventory as it sells through it's like that's amazing and hands off and they handle the customer service like wow yeah I'm definitely interested in that and then so what I started to do is poking around um, on Amazon because I was like yeah I want to try it I want to find a product I want to launch it I want to learn more about it see if I can do it because that sounds amazing and so I started poking around and it was slow because like I explained I had to click into every single listing one by one scroll down, look at what the BSR is, um, and then open up what I believe is called FBA Toolkit. Uh, so this process that I'm explaining right now, I found a much quicker, better, more rapid, more efficient way to do it after this, but I'll, I'll explain this process so it makes sense. Um, you, you then take that BSR number, throw it into FBA Toolkit, uh, and then look in the category where that BSR sits in the category. And then it would give you an estimate of at that BSR, approximately at that number of BSR, how many sales are taking place in that category. So you just lots of clicking, lots of copy paste, put the number in, hover over the graph, see what the approximate sales are. Um, and just, it was just a, a very slow, and frankly, you can still absolutely do it that way um, but it was just it's just very slow because you literally have to click in and copy and paste and too slow but that's how I did it for the first time I didn't know any better I didn't know otherwise I did it I just thought that was the only way you could do it so I launched my first product that way which was uh, a pop-up cabana I, I made a full video previously on my channel of all the products well at least up until the point that I made that video all the products that I'd sold on Amazon uh, but my first one was a pop-up cabana, just like a, you know, like you'll see at like a beach or a water park or something. And it did okay. Uh, I learned a lot. That's the, that's the most, that's the, that was the most important thing is I learned a lot and it prepped me perfectly for being able to launch the next product and have that one do extremely well. And the one after that did extremely well and so on. I have, there have been a few in there that it's not like every single one's been a perfect home run after that, but yeah, no, I, I, figured it out for lack of a better word or whatever uh, at, at that point. So pop-up cabana launched that It made some sales. And by the way, I, I think it was like six, seven, eight grand. I, kind of, I, could, I had to go back and look, but I think I spent like six to eight grand on that first batch of inventory, um, which I've also launched a product that did, uh, did really well for me for $800. So I, I would say that like three to five thousand dollars is like a really comfortable startup launch you know be able to get your product selling on Amazon uh, but it can be done for a lot less you can also spend a lot more it just kind of all depends on how much inventory you need to buy and how much your cost per unit is for each unit of inventory so I spent that I got the product up there and as far as like building the Amazon listing I mean, you, you've shopped on Amazon, it's, you got your pictures, your bullet points, a little description, and that's pretty much it. So that's also a lot less work than, I, well, there's also the back end stuff. Like, you know, I say oh, it's just bullet points or whatever. Like you do keyword research and, and I'll explain this more through this video, but you do keyword, keyword research and all that to make sure you're using good search terms and you obviously want your images to be very, very good. But basically I was like, wow, that's also a lot less work than Kickstarter because Kickstarter, like, 
if you've been on Kickstarter, it's a full page, like very long page, and you put a lot of information, infographics, uh, videos, GIFs, just a lot more art to it. But on Amazon, Amazon stripped a lot of that away and made it much more about just like the bullet points of the product and make that product as cheap as possible for the customer. And so uh, that, that, was a, that was just another really cool thing I liked about Amazon. So anyways, I get the pop-up cabana up there and it does okay. Uh, but I just, I just, I'd learned at that point, uh, by the time I got it launched and was selling, I was like, oh, I understand this so much better. I think I can uh, do this a lot better. And one of the main pieces of being able to see things a little, more, a little bit more clearly there is I learned that there's actually tools out there that make it so you don't have to click into each thing individually. But if, you're, if you search like pop-up cabana, then you hit this tool, it'll actually populate all that information that you'd click into individually, manually, and then go paste it somewhere else and look at that. It, this program had actually figured out how to compile all that for you into one small box on your screen. And so you could just look at how many sales each uh, product on the, each pop-up cabana on the, on the search results page I'm looking at, how many sales are they making? How much revenue are they making? How many reviews do they have? All right there in one tight little box. Instead of having to just jump around slowly and, and just, and that was called Jungle Scout. Um, and I used Jungle Scout for, I don't know how long, but it, I, I was all about Jungle Scout for a long time. And, and I haven't used it now for a while. I don't know, I don't know exactly where it sits. I'm sure it still works well. And like I said, you could even still just do it the manual way and still have a lot of success on Amazon. But now what I use and what I've used for the past years and what I think is the most, like it just, it's so good. They've got so many good tools. It works super well. Um, Helium 10 is the is the tool that I use now for product research and not just product research for everything else for more in-depth product research for literally like I'll, I'll go through some of the the tools in Helium 10 later but accounting is another really big one so at this point I, I got Jungle Scout and started doing my product research that way and that tool it, it made a, it made a huge difference um, it just the the way it sped things up just allowed you to research products so much more faster and on Amazon a lot of it is just being able to get sort through a lot of products faster and so once I could do that then I felt like well I could I have a much higher chance of finding a, a better product than this pop-up cabana and I did uh, the next one I launched was an SD card reader for iPhones so like you could pull the SD card out of your camera put it in this little adapter plug it into your phone and then download those images, videos onto your phone. And uh, that, that did extremely well. Within the first year, that one did over 100,000. And then I followed that one up shortly with using, again, these research tools with uh, another little product. And also that one did 100,000. And so with just those two products in my first year, I cleared over $200,000. And that's revenue, I, I, like 230, 230,000 or something in revenue. And, but my profit margins were roughly 30%. So that's really good money. And like I said, it was pretty passive. Like, I, 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 especially once I got the tool, then it's just like all about the product research, get the listing up and launched. But once you're kind of there, and especially once you're into like month three, four, five of, of your product being up there selling, you've been getting sales, you're getting more reviews and stuff like that. Then it really, like Amazon, if you've been doing things right by, Month, you know, month two, three, four, five, whatever, you should really be able to see some success happening. You can see it right off the bat, and I did those. Once I got the, got a tool to help me speed things up, the next ones I launched, um, and I'll, I'll explain I, in uh, you know my research process because you really want to look for it. Really, it, everything really hinges on how well you do your product research. Um, but if you do it well, you can your, your very first month you're profitable to just wrap up my story real fast of the different work stuff i've done so kickstarter amazon oh and also with kickstarter i learned how to run facebook ads successfully um and so i ran facebook ads for some kickstarter stuff i also got some clients that reached out to me to run facebook ads for them for some different projects or whatever and then amazon that worked and then i heard about amazon was the first time i started coming across any like online gurus talking about making money online and stuff and um, that all you know obviously that led me into seeing drop shipping stuff and that was interesting to me because I knew Facebook ads I'd had success with Kickstarter and Amazon it's like oh drop shipping seems cool um, 
but I've never really been a drop shipper, but I did create a store one time just to see. I wanted to, I like, Facebook ads are fun. Well, they're less fun now because Facebook has become way more strict. It used to be so much easier to just run Facebook ads. It's not, not as easy as it used to be. You can still, they can absolutely still work great for your, for your business. But um, at that time, I was just like, yeah, I, I want to try it. Because it was another one where like, you could kind of just run the ads but I'll get into this more. So anyways, I, I uh, put up a, a drop shipping store. I was selling the, the scratch off maps. It's like a, a map of the world. And then you take like a quarter or whatever and scrape scrape uh, wherever you, whatever part of the world off and it turns a color and you can end up with this colorful map anyways. Um, so I started selling those and I got that up to like $600 a day. Uh, how, I, however, I think I was selling the maps for like 30 bucks. So whatever the math is on that and how many sales per day, but uh, so I basically saw that, okay, drop shipping works, obviously. Um, but there was one thing that I didn't like, and it was the customer service component because, uh, you know, drop shipping, it's longer shipping times and all that, but also just, there's no Amazon taking care of the customer service portion for you. So you have to deal with all the emails that come in. You have to deal with people being like, Hey, where's my product? You got to deal with all the refunds and all that. And I was like, I guess a little bit spoiled at this point. Cause I was like, yeah, I don't really want to deal with that and I have this other stuff going so it's like I don't need this drop shipping stuff I just kind of wanted to poke at it and see what's up and uh, yeah basically I, I, I concluded that if I want to continue to do it I'm gonna hire hire people to handle customer service and stuff like that and I was just like that's not something I want to do right now is hire for because I was already Amazon was great and now I'll come back to Amazon in just a second um, and then also kind of in this period when I saw Amazon working, oh yeah, when, when I started seeing the online gurus talking about make money online stuff, I was like, I could, I could talk about how I'd done Kickstarter and Amazon stuff. Like why maybe I should start a YouTube channel and start to share this stuff. And so I did, I started a YouTube channel and I started to put up tutorials about, um, Kickstarter, Facebook ads and Amazon, which I don't know. I think YouTube wants you to be more niche specific than that. Like stick to one of those and, and then <laughs> stick to that on your channel. But anyways, I just kind of, I didn't necessarily, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to share the info. Cause like, again, I was kind of bitter, not bitter. I just think it's silly that like school wouldn't let me share this stuff and like, wasn't teaching this stuff. So it's like, I'm, I'm going to try and put some of this out and I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, at the very, at the very, very beginning, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll put a course with it too. But I, I made a couple of course sales, but I pulled that down because I was like, ultimately, I don't want to play the game of here's a little bit of information and some hyperbole or some flexing a Lambo or some numbers. So you buy my course. I really just wanted to be like, no, actually. And, and a lot of that is you got to like give people a little bit of information, but not all of it so that they feel like they have to go get the rest of it in your course. When I know full well, it's all online already for free. So Ultimately, I pulled the course stuff like I don't want to do that and just have made my YouTube channel about posting tutorials without withholding any information because I have no reason to. <laughs> like, so um, that's when I started a YouTube channel. And then uh, that's that's been really cool, too. I've liked YouTube a lot. Uh, kind of the same things happen as with Facebook, right? YouTube's become a lot more strict on things and isn't recommending like smaller creators like it used to, all that sort of stuff. But for the most part, YouTube has been pretty cool. Um, and what's been the coolest part about it is I've been able to post a tutorial up there on how to use Helium 10 to find products on Amazon. And that video for years has been doing very well, has helped a bunch of people. And also because, you know, YouTube lets, if you get into the YouTube program, uh, you can run that you can let them run ads on your videos and make some money from the ads. And so I did that. And uh, also since I'm, you know, uh, t doing tutorials on how to sell on Amazon and how to use this tool to find products. I link the tool. I put a link in the description so people can go see the tool and buy it. And if they happen to use that link right there, it's a link that is connected to me. And uh, as an affiliate of Helium 10, I can get a little bit of a commission back if someone does end up uh, starting to buying the program and starting to use it through that link. But they can also watch my video and just go type in helium10.com and then I don't see any money from that at all. So. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can tell on my channel, like I haven't been trying to push like at three times a week. Hey guys, I want some affiliate money from this company. So I'm just going to talk to you about this company. Nope. 
it hasn't been that at all but helium 10 is the best and uh it's like like if if you're making a tutorial about how to use this to sell and you don't have like just a simple little link that if someone does go through there you get a little money back out of it then you're just not being smart about things honestly so um i started making facebook videos kickstarter videos and amazon videos on my channel and then um and and letting ads run on those videos and then also with a helium 10 affiliate link on on my amazon videos or at least on some of them i don't even know if it's on all of them um and then what's cool about that is depending on the type of video and stuff but you know i've got some videos that still years later are still relevant still getting views still helping people and still making me money and um but I, I wouldn't have got to that without Amazon. Like Amazon, yeah, Amazon just really helped me get to the point where I could kind of see those things and actually be able to do those things with the YouTube channel. And YouTube, I would say, is um, just also very powerful like Amazon. So if you were not the, I know this is long-winded, but the point of me breaking all this down is to here be able to say Amazon is better than drop shipping. I feel very confident in that. And the number one business model I think you can start right now, the number one way to make money online, if you have a chunk of money to, if you have some capital to start it with, Amazon. Learn how to do really good research, find a product to launch on Amazon and do that. I think that's better. Yeah, the other stuff absolutely still works. And yeah, there's other people that like other stuff better, but I, like if you want the least amount of headache, the least amount, and, and not out of laziness, because if you're, fully lazy about this like you're not going to do pr good product research and it's not going to work for you so you got to have work ethic and everything but if inside of that you want to like not deal with customer service and not deal with having to house a bunch of inventory in your basement or in a warehouse like amazon if you've got three to five grand and will put in the time to learn how to do really good product research amazon i think is the best better than kickstarter better than drop shipping amazon now if you don't have money to get started I think YouTube is the best. It takes longer though. Like I, I when I first started my YouTube channel, uh, I was like, I'm giving myself at least three years uh, before I pull the plug on it. Cause I just know YouTube can, not that it always does, but it definitely can. And most, the, most like the, where people grow really fast on YouTube is more rare than common. But what is very common is slow growth over a few years, five years, seven years. And then, whoa, you've got like a full, time income off of your youtube channel now so that's what i like i was uh that's what i've tried to do with my well <laughs> i've been uh, as from the start that's what i want to do with my youtube channel at least give myself that amount of time but youtube if you don't have money to throw at some sort of business i think youtube's the way to go because you can start it completely for free you've got a smartphone that's legit all you need uh, and just a little bit of uh, research and and knowledge around like what kind of stuff people watch on YouTube and but for the most part like if you want to start something for free that has a ton of potential uh, and, and proven by hundreds of thousands of creators YouTube so if you have a little bit of capital do Amazon if you don't start a YouTube so what I want to do now is actually show you how to do product research to find products to sell on Amazon using helium 10 now helium 10 is actually a, a full suite of different tools in this video I'm going to show you maybe just one or two tools. I might mention a couple other ones, but actually show you one or two. Um, because I, there's really only, like if you wanna go bare bones and, and, and still be able to have all the success, the X-ray tool is that little box that populates all the data into, that's the one. And so I'm gonna show you how to use that and give you a couple tips along the way of how I do product research. And there is a link in the description you can also just pull up another tab, type it in yourself. But if you want to click that link and check out Helium 10 that way, I think you get a, I actually think you get a, I forget what the discount is. I think it's like 50% off if you click that link. So I thought I'd introduce you to this data tool that I'm talking about, uh, just using the product that I mentioned, which is the first one that I sold on Amazon, which is a pop-up cabana. So that's it right there. Just throw it in the search bar. And when I say search results page, that's what this is. So you typically how people, not even more than typically almost always how people shop on amazon is they know what they want and they go type it into the search bar and so what you want to do is find a product that people are that lots of people are typing into the search bar every single day every single month 
and then when they type it in, they get uh, different results that show up right here, right? A list of different sellers selling pop-up cabanas. And ideally, like best case scenario, you find a product that people are typing in a bunch, and when they search it, you pop up right here in one of these top spots as the seller of that product. That's the whole, that's everything. Like identify the product, a really good one that people are searching for, meaning really high demand. There's a lot of people that search for the product and buy it every day, every month. And you wanna find one of those in your research, and then you want to sell one of those and pop up here as one of the top listings. And that's how you make gold on Amazon. And so I'll show you real quickly how I used to do it manually. So I'd click into a listing like this. I'd scroll all the way down to, let's see, is that too far? To this section right here, I'd look at the best sellers rank, which is 7,677 in sports and outdoors. Then I go to FBA toolkit. And then I go to the sports and outdoors section right here. What was it again? It was 7,600, 7,600. Hover over here to roughly that range. And so there's five, that's the 5,000 BSR at a sales per day of 38. 10,000 BSR at a sales per day of 27. So somewhere, roughly somewhere between 27 and 38 sales per day is what this seller of this product is making, which is, act, which is really good. Uh, and you know, should be because they're the top spot right here. And uh, I'll show you how you can get an idea of how often people are searching something like this. Um, there's a couple different ways, but one of, I mean, one of the main ways is just if a lot of sales are happening of a product, then on Amazon, like people are searching for it. Um, Amazon's mainly just a search and buy for the most part. Sometimes you'll see an ad on Facebook and click to an Amazon listing or whatever, but by far for the most part, Amazon is search and buy. So um, if something sold a lot, it also probably means that it's being searched a lot. But the tool you can use, so I've installed Helium 10 already and if you, it's just a Chrome extension, so you go up there and click it, and then X-Ray is the tool that I'm talking about that populates all the data into one nice little box for you. So instead of manually doing what you just saw me do on each listing on this search results page, I click the X-Ray tool, and it populates all that info for me right here. So you've got the product details column, ASIN, which, uh, so you don't need to pay attention to necessarily every one of these columns. I'll show you the main stuff. Um, but the ASIN is like the unique number identifier associated with each product. Then you've got the brand name, the price point it's selling at, how many sales it's making per month. Uh, this is a sales graph right here, which shows you how the, its sales are fluctuating over time, if they are. Shows you the amount of revenue that they're making per month. And uh, so, you know, obviously revenue is not profit. So they've got all their costs that they subtract from this, you know, and they've got to pay some Amazon fees and all that. And that is part of it, by the way, I didn't mention earlier, but for Amazon FBA to use their warehouse and have them do customer service and all that, you do pay them a fee for that. But in my opinion, it's very well worth it. Uh, it yeah, it just it just makes it it makes it so easy. Um, and you can't really you can't necessarily sell on Amazon and avoid all of their fees. You could house inventory yourself um, in your own warehouse or whatever and still have an Amazon listing up, and that'll do away with some of the fees. But you know, like their warehousing fees and their pick, pack, and ship fees, but then you're the one having to do all that or you're having to hire someone else to do all that for you. So Amazon just makes it pretty pretty simple to do that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you'll see these numbers right here. So, and also this SP right here means that it's sponsored, meaning that this person's running an ad. So here, let me, let me actually close this for a second and break this down. So these first two top spots, because I was saying you want to show up in the top spots. Okay, well these are sponsored, meaning that they paid to be in these top spots, which is, great strategy as well but what i'm saying is organically you want this top spot you know these top three spots you definitely want to be on the first page the top of the first page because i mean think about it how often does anybody go to a second or third or fourth page on amazon to shop even like on google when searching for stuff it's, it's pretty much all the action takes place on the front page and at the top half of the front page so that's where you organically want to get your listing to show up and so this person right here, this white fang, is doing an amazing job at it. You know, the, all these top sellers have done a really good job at earning those, those top positions there.
All right, I'll jump back into the data box here. Um, and yeah, so it'll give you their BSR right here as well. It'll tell you roughly what their FBA fees are. So like this one, uh, let's, so, oh, I guess while we're talking sponsored, in this box, I like to remove the sponsored products because like I said, we want to show up organically. So filtering in people that are paying to be in certain positions isn't really the data we want to be looking at. So I like to select them and then just hit delete. And then that removes them from this graph. There's some more down like this one too. Um, but yeah, I like to do that as well. Okay. And then it tells, so, oh yeah, I was going to say, so this one right here, it's FBA fees are $23 and it's selling for 80 bucks. So 80 bucks minus 23, $57, right? So, and then this probably cost them probably like eight to 12 bucks, maybe a little bit more, maybe, maybe. So let's just knock another 10 off of that. Let's say they're at 47 bucks and then let's say they're running some ads. So. I don't know, let's say let's they might be pulling a, a 30, 40 dollar profit off of each one of these, which honestly is really amazing. Uh, if you a ten dollar profit margin and a high volume, like a lot of sales happening on Amazon is amazing. But if you if you can get up to like a 20, 30, 40 dollar profit margin on Amazon and have a high sales volume, killing it, which is why this person right here is doing exactly that. If we look right here, they're making 250,000 a month in revenue just off this one product, extremely passively for that amount of money. And they're pulling a really healthy profit margin out of that. So that's just absolutely amazing. And then you've got the review count right here, which is extremely important. So the first couple things I do when I, so number one, when you look at a page of search results, you don't want it to be a page of completely different products. You want it to be like search pop-up cabana and when you look at the results they're all pop-up cabanas you don't want to be on a page where it's like a toothbrush a watermelon a kleenex box a kid's toy like you don't want to do your research necessarily that way you want to hone in on a specific niche product like pop-up cabana and analyze that little niche product market and then you want to pull up x-ray and the first thing i go to is the sales column i want to see how many sales are happening because i want to identify that there's high demand like i explained and meaning that there's people a lot of people buying this product every single month because you don't want to launch a product that you don't know if people are going to buy or not the idea one of the really cool things here with this product research is you get to eliminate a lot of the risk by doing this research up front you're not guessing you're not going in blind you're basing it off of these numbers off of data off of yep pop-up cabanas thousands and thousands and thousands of them are sold every single month they're high in demand now it might be a little bit seasonal because we're in summer right now and that's where you'd want to use the sales graph right here to look a little bit deeper into is it selling consistently month to month is it seasonal are there kind of like some ups and downs um but sales demand is the first thing you want to look at. If we clicked in here and we saw like 50, 75, 25, move on. Don't waste your time. There's not a, like not enough demand there to really make good money. So sales demand, that's the most important. Second most important is the review count. Because basically how this works is it, when, how people shop on Amazon, right? They search and then they start to analyze the listings for which one they're going to buy. How do they choose out of all the different options which one they're going to buy mainly that's going to be based off of reviews whichever one has the most reviews and the highest quality of reviews meaning the closest to a full filled up five stars and that's who pretty much wins the top spots and so when you're launching on amazon if you're going to if you're going to launch on amazon if you're going to launch your product you don't and your competitors have 2,000 reviews 4,000 reviews and you launch and you have zero, how do you expect someone to buy your product versus these other people that have 4,000 five-star reviews? Like they're never even gonna see your product. All they're gonna do is just go buy this one because it's proven that it sells really well and 4,000 reviews say so. So ideally you want to be able to launch a product with with a, with a smaller amount of reviews, you're actually able to get sales. So in this case, the review count and so and so what i mean by that is like okay we've identified high demand lots of sales are happening perfect but if you're going to launch now 
what's the competition gonna look like? And competition boils down to the other sellers of the product, how many reviews do they have? If they have thousands, you probably don't wanna launch, and launch that product. Um, if they have hundreds, I'll explain this a little bit better. So right here, when we look at this, at the, view, at the review count for these products, 1,000, 2,000, 600, 1,000, 100, 1,000, 100, okay, 14 and three. Um, and so I would look at this and go, yeah, this is just a little bit too competitive. I mean, because to really make some good sales, you've got to have a thousand plus reviews. And so what I like to do is look for products within like 10, 20, 40, kind of like 70 reviews max. Like I need to be able to, within that range, already be making really good sales. And the way you can see that is just, is, is it already happening? That's like the easiest way to look at things is, is it already happening? Okay, then I can probably do the exact same thing. So the way I would look at this is like, okay, there's some sellers making a ton of sales, awesome, but are any of them making that amount of sales with 10 reviews, 50 reviews? No. In order to make those amount of sales on this product, you have to have 1,000 reviews, 2,000 reviews. This guy's got 628 reviews, and he's doing 1,400 sales per month, 84,000 in revenue. That's really good, but even 600 rev reviews is still a ton. So, but if I see, even if there are sellers that have thousands of reviews, but then if I still see, yeah, there's a few sellers with 30 reviews, 50 reviews that are making a thousand sales a month, 700 sales a month, then that is proof that, it, that, that you can, that there are sellers of this product with low reviews doing really well. And so then you just kind of have to ask yourself, well, if I launch and add another seller into that mix, is the pie big enough that I can carve out a little slice for myself with 30 or 40 reviews and make a little bit of money for myself. And so that's what ideally I'm looking for when I'm looking for product. I don't care what the product is. I don't care if it's a pop-up cabana. I don't care if it's an SD card adapter. I don't care if it's an umbrella, like whatever. I'm interested in the data. I'm interested in number one, how many sales are there? And then if there's a bunch, then I go, perfect. How, how competitive is it? Can I launch and with 30 reviews get a whole bunch of sales? In this case, no, nope. I would have to get at least hundreds, 500, but really more probably into the thousand, thousand up range to really make good sales. So I would say really high demand on this product. That's great, but it's too competitive. So I need to just scrap it and go try and find another product to look at. And that's how you want to use this data box right here is just to be able to quickly and, and again, because it's going to be a matter of you need to be able to go through a bunch of different products and you don't, sometimes it's quick. Sometimes you find one quick. Sometimes you'll spend days looking for something and just not really find anything. But the faster you can sort through products, the better, the quicker you'll get to one that um, has high demand and low competition. And so this is where I, like this blew my mind when I learned that you could actually pull this up all into one little box. Cause it changed everything. Like it makes it so easy. It tells you it all right here. It tells you how many sales, how competitive, is it too competitive or, or the perfect amount for you to come in and make some sales? And you also do want to see that there is some competition, like several sellers selling the product because they are the proof. They are the data, the proof in the data of how much demand there is, how competitive is it? And then you just get to sit there and look and go, yeah, I can launch that product. I can get 15 reviews and I can make 600 sales. And then, I can let that, you know, more reviews and more sales come in. And by month three, now I'm at a hundred reviews and I'm making way, and I'm making 1200 sales. And so for me, this was the game changer. And with that said, and so for me, and so for me learning that this type of, and so for me learning that this type of tool existed was the game changer. And I, like I said earlier at the time, the tool I used was Jungle Scout, wasn't Helium 10, but I, but I got a couple more products launched and I started making actual real money and had to start doing some real accounting and then wanted to learn a little bit more about some different things I could do inside of Amazon, more about PPC, like the how to run you know, Amazon ads inside of Amazon, how to keep track of my numbers autom 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 automatically, how to automate my accounting instead of having to like throw it all into Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. And that's where, um, you know, Jungle Scout had, they, it came out with um, uh, something that helped, like an accounting software, and so I started using that, but, but then I don't know exactly how it happened, honestly. I, maybe an ad or something like that, I don't know, but eventually I started seeing Helium 10. 
Um, and then and then I just I looked into it one time and I was like, oh, this is better. And I and you can free trial it. So I free trialed it, and it had just better, more robust tools for the whole thing. So, uh, but but with that said, the number one thing that I would say you don't need because I showed you how to do it manually. But in my opinion, it'll just save you so much time and make the research so much more efficient. Helium 10 X-ray. Get Helium 10 X-ray. Do your research, especially if you're like on a budget trying to do this low cost and not, you know, buy all the tools up front and all that. Just pay what you need to pay to get x-ray. And that's really the main thing that you need to do all of your research. And like I said, just focus on high demand and low competition. How many sales are there? And then uh, how many reviews? And hopefully you find a lot of sales and then not a lot of reviews. When you find that, that's the product you want to launch. And there's more to it, like don't launch products that have patents on it, uh, all that sort of stuff. Like you know, but for the most part, that's 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 <laughs> I, that's Amazon, man. That's like that's whether you're successful or not selling on Amazon is if you can identify just that little bit that I just showed you. And for uh, you know, I've been selling on Amazon for years now, and uh, I've had the the opportunity of both being able to work with people brand new to it trying to just understand what I just explained and then I've have been fortunate to meet other Amazon sellers that are doing a million a hundred thousand a month whatever and it's it's product research it's not like oh I found the coolest product or my, it's just it's your research like, that's really what it boils down to if you use my link that's in the description it'll bring you to this page where you get 50% off your first month if you use Scosho 50 or 10% off every month when you use code Scosho 10. So I thought I'd highlight just a couple other tools real fast um, and I'll dive into these more in a follow-up video here. But uh, for product research, I also like to use Blackbox a lot because like when you're going on to Amazon and you just need to start looking at a whole bunch of different random products, that, that can be a little bit tricky because it's like, well, where do I start or where do I go or how do I populate random products? Blackbox is good for that. Some people rely too much on it and think it's like try and make it like a, a genie in a bottle that serves up magic products. It doesn't work like that, but it is a great way to populate a bunch of random products and really get the ball rolling. Keyword research. <clears throat> so like I talked about, you know, like pop up cabana, that's a keyword phrase. And you want to identify what those phrases are, what those keywords are that people are typing in to find the product that they want to buy. And one really good tool, extremely good tool, like bonkers powerful to do that is Cerebro and it's called the reverse ASIN keyword. And so that little, that ASIN number that I showed you that's unique to each um, product that's being sold, you basically just copy and paste that into this Cerebro tool right here. And then it'll show you all the different keywords and phrases that that product, that, that people are searching to find that product and what that product ranks for when that keyword is typed in. Really powerful stuff. And then also here in the operations section, I really like, you know, Refund Genie is really good. It's funny, I just used the word genie. Uh, maybe that was, anyways. Uh, yeah, Refund Genie, so like sometimes Amazon messes up on refunds. That'll help you recoup some of the money that Amazon's messed up on, whatever. But also follow-up is a really good one to send out emails to people that bought your product to encourage them to leave a review, that sort of stuff. And then under analytics, there's profits. And that's what just, that's gonna help you automatically just track all your numbers, which is really, really helpful. And so right there, I would say those tools, if you want like the absolute bare minimum, I already told you this is just that x-ray tool. You can do everything you need with that. But if you want to like not have to deal with spreadsheets and all that sort of stuff, um, and, and Cerebro is amazing for looking up keyword phrases and all that then then i would recommend yeah like the main ones x-ray cerebro follow-up for for emails and profits for keeping track of your numbers like you get all those you're in a really comfortable efficient spot to be selling on amazon and keeping track of your stuff and so if we look at the pricing right here for helium 10 uh, there's a starter a platinum diamond and then you know enterprise if you want to get in touch and kind of customize some stuff with them or whatever but um, starter, so to show you, it gives you full access to x-ray, uh, limited access to the rest. It'll give you like, you can use this two times a day, that sort of thing. If you want the main stuff that I just mentioned, you want it basically all unlimited, the platinum plan is what you want. And instead of 97, 
use that link that I that's in the description and get it for 48 instead. And it, by the way, it's risk free with the 30 day money back guarantee right here. So like if you don't like it, you can get your money back, but you'll like it. It's a really great tool. The only thing platinum limits you on is a uh, I mean, I guess, I guess all of them are limited, not all of them, but some of them. So like follow up 5,000 emails a month, uh, keyword tracker, you can track 2,500 keywords a month, but for any, anybody beginner or, I mean, if you're not really doing some crazy numbers on Amazon, then platinum is going to be just fine for you. But if you're doing a lot bigger numbers or just want access to some of these other tools, which I haven't touched on, but I will in later videos, add atomic and portal stuff like that, then the diamond plan is the way you want to go. But um, yeah, that's because like if you come over here, just the starter is 37, but you're, you you get x-ray, but then the rest of the stuff's limited. But if you just, what is that, 10, 11, 50 more, then you've got everything that I just mentioned so, uh, without really any limits. Um, so that, that's a pretty good deal.